Hi guys and welcome back to the Mighty Blues. My name is of course Cameron and welcome back today to another video. We're going to sit down and talk about the vacant Everton manager's position once again today because there has been another update, another name thrown straight into the top of the mix as it seems anyway by a lot of sources and a lot of journalists over the last two hours or so and that name is former Liverpool and Newcastle boss Rafa Benitez. Now according to Jim White and a whole host of other journalists and publications in um, and around sort of Everton Football Club and in and around this country. Uh, Rafa Benitez is apparently the top of the list. Now Everton had held talks with Benitez today. Those talks were very positive. Jim White and TalkSport believe that Rafa Benitez is on the brink of becoming Everton manager after more talks today. The Telegraph have said that Everton are on the verge of appointing Rafa Benitez, the Liverpool Echo have stated that Rafa Benitez is tonight closing in on becoming the new Everton manager. Alan Myers then come out and said Rafa Benitez has not been offered the Everton job at this point. However, talks have taken place. Um, Mark Ogden of ESPN come out and said Everton's manager appointment is likely to come down to a straight choice between Rafa Benitez and Roberto Martinez, who is open to a return. Paul Joyce has said that Rafa Benitez is expecting to be formally offered the Everton manager's job after further talks with senior Everton figures today. You've had various other journalists and, and you know publications over the last sort of couple of hours or so talking about this. Paddy Boyland, of course, of the Athletic has said that as per others, Rafa Benitez now at the forefront of the race to become new Everton manager after positive talks. Like I said, the Athletic had ran with that article. Sky Sports also running with that article as well. The Telegraph, Talksport, various, various, various different publications and different journalists now coming out and basically stating that Rafa Benitez is, um, you know, at the top of that list or see it, it seems at the top of that list for Everton talks have been held today. Um, it seems from, from you know, what I'm taking from those is that the Everton board, including Farad Mishiri, are happy with the talks with Rafa Benitez um, and that, you know, maybe he is now number one target. We had very similar uh, discussions to this on Saturday afternoon regarding Nuno Espirito Santo and the talks that he had had with the football club and we said that, you know, there was the same types of rumours coming out from the same types of journalists. I specifically remember Paul Joyce and other journalists coming out and saying that Nuno Espirito Santo is on the verge of becoming the new Everton manager after positive talks and he believes he'll receive a contract offer from Everton within 24 to 48 hours. Obviously, no contract offer was put on the plate for Nuno Espirito Santo, or at least it doesn't seem like that because he still, you know, he isn't the Everton manager at the moment. But the latest news tonight is that Everton, according According to TalkSport and various other sources are on the verge of appointing Rafa Benitez as the new Everton manager. And another twist and another turn, sharp turn in this in this manager merry-go-round that we've been living in over the last couple of weeks or so. If, if I'm being completely honest with you at all... I'm getting a little bit bored of it now, to be honest with you. I'm drained, I'm emotionally drained, I'm physically drained, I'm mentally drained. I just want this all to be over. I'd spent pretty much the entirety of Saturday afternoon, Sunday afternoon, convincing myself that if it was Nuno Espirito Santo that was going to become the new Everton manager, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. The reason I'd convince myself of that is, of course, because of the strong rumours on Friday night linking Nuno Espirito Santo with a move to Everton Football Club. So I'd sat there and practically said, yeah, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if he was to come in, would it? Um, obviously, that went very quiet very quickly. Now it's Rafa Benitez who's right at the top of that list. Obviously, there's there's been sort of rumours regarding Rafa Benitez potentially coming in at Everton over the last couple of days or so. We briefly spoke about them on yesterday's live stream. He was sort of creeping in. He was creeping back into the odds. Um, and, you know, different newspapers and journalists were starting to talk about him as a potential option for the Everton board. And it was clear that that information was being fed to those journalists with the, with the knowledge that there was going to be talks with Rafa Benitez today regarding the Everton manager's role and therefore over the last couple of days we've heard you know news and bits of information about Rafa being back on the table and Everton being interested in talking to Rafa Benitez to become the next Everton manager and then obviously those talks have happened today and again like I said there's various journalists now that believe that he is the number one target and that Everton are on the verge of appointing the ex-Liverpool boss as the new manager. Um, look, listen, it, this is an appointment that is is not you know, I think I think we've, we've we've spoke about every manager, haven't we, over the last two weeks or so? Very literally, every manager we've spoken about a hundred 
and 42 managers that are managers that have been linked with the Everton job and pretty much all of them have split opinion there's not really been one name maybe with the exception of Christoph Galtier who everybody sort of sat down and gone yeah I'm fully behind that we're all fully behind that manager we'll all rally behind them they're the right man for the job every name from David Moyes to Nuno Espirito Santo to Graham Potter to Eddie Howe they've all been you know, they've all had their, 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 I don't want to say lovers and haters, but they've all had their backers and they've all had the fans that are a little bit more um, pessimistic about the situation. And I feel like it was always going to be a situation with whoever Everton appointed, whoever it was that was going to come in as the new Everton manager, was going to face criticism. And there was always going to be a selection of fans that weren't happy with the appointment, whether it be Graham Potter, because of the fact that, you know, he's only managed at Brighton and he hasn't won more than 10 Premier League games in a single season. And Brighton weren't necessarily you know, didn't necessarily have the best season last season, but then there'd be fans that would be for Graham Potter because of the football that he plays, and Brighton had a very creative side, playing nice, positive attack and football. Then you had the likes of Nuno Espirito Santo, some fans saying they don't want him because the the the, 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 the uh, season last season for Wolves was absolutely dreadful. Some of the football he played were dreadful. It was very one-dimensional. He couldn't adapt from a change in formation. And, and then other fans are saying, well, let's look at the other two seasons he had at Wolves in the Premier League. They were fighting for Europe. They were in Europe at one point, I think they got to a quarter final of the, uh, of the Europa League, and um, you know, playing some nice football, beat Everton comfortably on a couple of occasions as well. So, you know, you had again Eddie Howe, who had some people saying it'd be a decent appointment, some people saying it wouldn't be. But every manager that we'd been linked to over the last two weeks since Carlo Ancelotti has left the football club have all had their. You know, like I said, the the, the fans that were, were were ready to back them and were happy to back them, and the fans that were a little bit more pessimistic and thought, no, they're not good enough for the job, and that was always going to be the case, and there was always going to be division uh, amongst Evertonians with whoever it was to to come in. I really didn't think the club would appoint the one man that would bring them, you know, more division to the football club than any other name and that is Rafa Benitez let's have that right now we can sit here all we like and say we don't care about the Liverpool connection and the things that he said in his past and in his past and we can look over the fact he managed Liverpool if he's the right man for the job but the reality of the situation is Rafa Benitez is already coming into Everton Football Club with a massive massive target on his back and by the way we don't know if it's officially Rafa Benitez again I said this on Saturday when we talked about Nuno Espirito Santo nothing has been officially confirmed by the football club all we know so far is that Everton have held talks with Rafa Benitez, the talks were positive and Rafa Benitez is now said to be the number one target for Everton, now this was all said but about Nuno Espirito Santo on Friday night, literally less than a week ago, the same things were said about Nuno Espirito Santo, talks were positive, he's expecting a contract offer within the next couple of days, he's number one target for Everton now, Everton are on the verge of bringing in Nuno Espirito Santo, it was all said about him on Friday and now it's all being said about Rafa Benitez, now I'm not saying that Rafa Benitez won't be the new Everton manager and he won't come in because certain things you're reading suggest that certain members of the board are, are a massive fan of Rafa Benitez and would want to bring him in. Um, but what I'm saying is it's not completely done and dusted. It's not a done deal. The club haven't announced it. So you'd have to obviously take everything that we're reading with a pinch of salt and take everything that we're reading with the understanding that it might just be a case of Everton have sat down with Rafa Benitez, formally interviewed him and been impressed with what he's had to say and now he will be under consideration along with Nuno Espirito Santo and along with whoever else is on that shortlist for Everton. But the reality of the situation is, as I was saying, uh, as I was saying, if, if, if Rafa Benitez is to come into Everton Football Club, he's already coming in with a massive target on his back and I mean a gigantic target on his back and... If he loses, you know, we're going to talk about the Premier League fixtures in a moment because the Premier League have announced the, the fixtures for next season, so we'll have a little talk about them uh, later on in the in the video. But if Rafa Benitez loses the opening two games of the season, a lot of Evertonians will turn on them. If he, if, he, if he loses two or three games on the bounce in November or in December or in January, a lot of Evertonians will turn on them and it'll get to that point where once Evertonians turn... They won't be able to turn back. They won't be able to accept that, um, you know, we, we've got to trust the process or we've got to trust the manager and we've got to put our faith in the manager because you will get all of the agent Rafa Benitez shouts and you'll get them all over the park laughing and joking and having a smile if it doesn't go as well as as we would hope it would go. And, and again, like I said, the last thing Everton needed at this current moment was to bring in a manager who was going to cause more 
division in the football club than what currently is. We already feel so disconnected to the board and the decisions the board make. We already feel so disconnected to the players and the work ethic and and the effort that some of the players put in. We already feel disconnected to managers and coaches at times. We didn't. We needed a manager that was going to come into Everton, or at least in my opinion, that was going to come into Everton and galvanise the whole squad, get the whole club from fans to the board to the manager to the coaches to the players every single person that has an affinity with Everton Football Club through a job or through being a supporter we needed a manager that was going to be able to come in and get us all fighting in the right and moving in the right direction moving forward in the right direction with the same plan in the same agreements singing off the same hymn sheet that's what we needed and I just don't feel like Rafa Benitez is that man whatsoever I feel like he comes in there's already like I said you know a, a sour sort of um, a sour feel to it because of his Liverpool connection and, and not just because of that I want to talk about Rafa Benitez as a manager in a moment but we can sit here all we like and say oh we'll be okay we'll put the Liverpool connection to one side Cam or we'll, we'll forget the, thing, the, the things that he said 10 or 15 years ago why should we forget that but also let's be honest we might sit here when he's announced or if he's announced over the next you know, couple of days or so and say right we can forget that because he's Everton manager now and, and we're moving forward and that's fine but are we going to forget that if we lose at Anfield and, and Liverpool fans are singing his name? Are we going to forget that if we lose a couple of games on the bounce and we're not doing too well in the league in November, December time? Or is that Ella, is that Liverpool connection? Is that, you know, those words that he said 10 or 15 years ago that really hurt Everton, Everton fans and, and Everton as a football club at that time? Are those going to come back and haunt Rafa Benitez? And look, Rafa Benitez is a strong character. He done it at Chelsea. He went into Chelsea where he wasn't liked. He was booed by the fans. He was, you know, he was disliked heavily by the fans. That's no secret. And he, you know, he stuck up with it. He put his shoulders out. He gave it the old smile. And he's got that sort of, I don't want to say arrogance, but I suppose, I suppose it is a sort of arrogance and, and a confidence to be able to take that criticism. He's a manager that, that doesn't really... Um, you know, criticism from fans doesn't really have a massive effect on him, as shown with the Chelsea job. He went into Chelsea, stuck it out, and he won them a European Cup, and, and you know, ultimately went into Chelsea to do a job, and he did that job. And if he comes into Everton, and you have to say to Evertonians, yeah, Cam, but he's going to win you an, an FA Cup or a European Cup, I think we'd all go, yeah, Sam, forget about the Liverpool thing, because he's going to come in and make Everton a success. But what I'm saying is, if it goes wrong for him, and I think that could only be, you know, that could take two defeats on the bounce or three defeats on the bounce or a bad derby defeat or a bad defeat in a big game, then I just think that there'll be a lot of Evertonians that are out to get Rafa Benitez for that reason because of him being an ex-Liverpool manager. It's very difficult to forget the success he had with Liverpool Football Club. It's very difficult to forget his affinity with Liverpool Football Club. He still has a massive affinity with that club. They're his club, and, and, and he has said that before, and, and, and I've got no issue with that. What I've got an issue with is him coming into Everton Football Club at a time when we need unity, at a time when we need a manager that's going to galvanise everybody at the club, that's going to get everybody, like I said, singing off of the same hymn sheet and working in the same direction, working off the same plan. I just don't think Rafa Benitez is that man. And plus, let's look at Rafa Benitez as a manager as well. You know, obviously he was successful at Liverpool 2005, won the Champions League, won an FA Cup in 06, I think, won a European Cup with Chelsea in maybe 2011, 12, something like that. It was round about then. Then he obviously went to he went to Real Madrid, he done okay there. He went to Napoli. Napoli won, a, I think, an Italian Coppa um, maybe seven, eight years ago, which was the last trophy he's won as a manager. He then obviously went to Newcastle. And done a decent job. Newcastle fans absolutely lord him and will tell you he's the best thing since sliced bread. I think he got them relegated, but then got them promoted again and stabilised them. But let's be honest, the job he done at Newcastle isn't the type of job he's going to be expected to do at Everton. And then he went over to China more recently um, and didn't have a great time over there. I think he, he picked up more losses than wins whilst he was over in China. And I know that you can't really hold his time over there against him in regards to his Premier League experience and his experience in European football because it's, it's a much different kettle of fish and I get that. But the reality of the situation is, if Everton were, if this, if this let's say, was an, another ex-Liverpool manager, let's say now, <clears throat> and I might get shot down for this in the comments, and that's fair enough, everyone's entitled to their own opinion, of course, but let's say now, Jürgen Klopp turned round tomorrow and said, I want to manage Everton. I want to be the next manager of Everton Football Club. I'd look at it and go, okay, you've got an affinity to Liverpool. Don't really like you because of that affinity to Liverpool. But you've won a Premier League title and you've won a Champions League title in the space of two years. Jürgen Klopp is currently a manager who is a success, who is succeeding at his job in current football. 
Brendan Rodgers, another example, ex-Liverpool manager, if he said, I want the Everton job, I'd look at it and go, ex-Liverpool manager though, and I know there's a lot of Evertonians that wouldn't want Jürgen Klopp or Brendan Rodgers, no matter how successful they are, because of that Liverpool connection, but I personally would be able to say, right, okay, I'll park that for Brendan Rodgers, because he's just won an FA Cup with Leicester, Leicester have very clearly improved since he's been there, he's a fantastic coach, he's getting them fighting for Champions League football, he's getting them consistently in European football, that's what we need, he's at the top, he's at maybe not the top of his game, but he's he, he's at a good level now. Rafa Benitez isn't. Rafa Benitez uh, was a success and won big trophies in football 15 years ago. Rafa Benitez last won a major honour in Italy eight years ago, not including being promoted with Newcastle, which isn't a major honour in my eyes, certainly not for where Everton want to be. He last won a major honour in England or for an English club with Chelsea when he won the um, the the Europa League or the UEFA Cup, whatever it was called at that time, I believe. I think it was the Europa League at that time. Um, so, it's not just about Rafa Benitez's Liverpool connection. It's about the fact that, personally, for me, I just don't think he's the right man for the job. I just don't think he's good enough for the job. However, having said that, if it's Rafa Benitez, then, look, what I said this about Nuno the other day. What 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 are we gonna do but get behind him? What 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 other choices do we have as a fan base but to get behind him? Are we gonna stop going the game? Are we gonna stop watching Everton? Look, some Evertonians. I've seen a lot of Evertonians on social media over the last couple of hours or so say that's it. If Rafa Benitez comes into Everton, I'm done. I'm not going the game. I'm canceling my season ticket. I'm not watching again. I won't be buying anything of Everton. I won't be I won't be engaging with anything regarding Everton Football Club as long as he is the Everton manager, and that's fine, because that's their opinion, and, that, and everybody's entitled to their own opinion, and everybody's entitled to feel how they feel, and to act upon how they feel in the way in which they want to, and that's fine, I will still be going to Goodison Park and watching Everton, I will sit here and go, don't really agree with it, don't think he's what we need, don't think he, he, he galvanises and unites the club like we, like we, like we were hoping, but... I'll still be at Goodison Park the first chance I get next season because I haven't been there in two years. Well, not two years, over a year, year and a half. So as soon as I get a chance, whether it's Rafa Benitez, whether it's Mr Bean or whether it's me nan managing Everton, I'll still be down there watching Everton because Everton are my football club. Rafa Benitez, Carlo Ancelotti, Marco Silva, uh, David Moyes, Roberto Martinez, Ronald Koeman, Sam Allardyce, David Unsworth, they're all managers, they all come and go, they've, be, they, they, they've done well here or they didn't do well, they've come in at one stage and they've gone on another stage, I as a fan and everybody watching this as an Everton fan won't come and go, we'll always be here throughout anything supporting this football club, so I will continue to support Everton. I'm not, and, and I, like I said, it's fair enough if you're one of those fans that won't go the game or won't, will stop watching, that's fine, I can't do that, I'll always go the game, I'll always continue watching and supporting Everton Football Club, no matter who's the manager, and if I'm gonna do that, there's no point in me having this mentality of, I'm gonna boo Rafa Benitez every time I go to Goodison, or I'm gonna, I'm gonna get banners to say Rafa out before he's even had a chance to prove himself, but I will understand that. If he loses a few games on the bounce, it's probably gonna be game over for him in regards to fans, because of that that past that he's had and because of some of the things he, he he said in his past as well when he managed that that you know the football club across the park so for me if it, if it is Rafa Benitez that's the decision the board have made that's the decision the club have made and us as fans we don't have to get behind him I'm not I'm not saying everybody has to get behind him everybody's entitled to their own opinion if if you don't want Rafa Benitez at Everton and you don't think he's your manager then you don't have to get behind him you don't have to go to the game you don't have to support Everton that's fine but I personally will, will get behind Everton Football Club, I'll get behind the players, I'll get behind, if it's going well, and if it, even if it's not going well, I'll still be there and I'll still get behind them, I just hope that I can be proved wrong, and I can actually see if he does come in, that actually, do you know what, Rafa Benitez is still a top tactician, who can still compete at this level, and can take Everton where we want to be, Um but at the moment, I have I have doubts about that, but look, we, we don't know, again, like I said, there's a lot of journalists that, you know, if this was to last week, you'd have thought, right, okay, it's it's Rafa and he's going to get announced. Uh, that's it, it's done and dusted. You don't get these big hitting journalists coming out saying what they're saying if it, if it wasn't him. But a lot of these journalists said the same thing about Nuno Espirito Santo last Friday. And 24, 48 hours later, Nuno, you know, again, that just faded away, didn't it, really? So, at the moment, the latest update is that... Everton have spoken to Rafa Benitez today, the talks were very positive and apparently he's right at the top of the list, some people like Jim White and TalkSport believe that Everton are on the brink of um, bringing in Rafa Benitez, I think the Telegraph also stated Everton are on the verge of bringing in Rafa Benitez as the new Everton manager, but 
as the thing uh, as it stands Paul Joyce's comments um you know recently with that Rafa Benitez believes talks uh, with Everton went well and he's expecting a contract offer within the next 24 hours or so um yeah, I'll tell you, Rafa Benitez is expecting a for, to be formally offered the Everton manager job after further talks progressed today. So, look, there you go. Dominic King, 11 minutes ago, coming out saying, Mishiri has made the approach for Benitez, not anyone else at Everton. If he proceeds and appoints him, it will be a remarkable show of doing as he pleases. Um, which, uh, again, look, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm, to be honest, I'm not, again, I'm not, not really a, a big fan of that to be honest with you I'm, I'm, I'm not a big fan of that whatsoever because in my opinion Farad Mashiri has, has brought in a director of football and Farad Mashiri should be allowing that director of football in Marcel Brands to actually do his job and to choose the manager and to choose players and to you know be able to do that job you know that he's being paid to do and it's clear that you know, Farad Mashiri isn't allowing Marcel Brands to do that at the moment. If that is the case, if that is said to be true, um, hopefully, if, you know, whoever it is, Marcel Brands comes out and says, yes, I agreed it, and yes, I wanted to bring that manager in. But at the moment, from what we're being fed, it feels very much like Farad Mashiri's gone, I don't really care what anybody else thinks, this is the man I want, so this is the man I'm going to go out and get. Um, and look, again, if that's the case, I'm not, you know, again... Maybe it's time, and, and, and this will be a, a turning point for a lot of Evertonians, by the way, in regards to the board, and maybe specifically Mashiri, is, is if that's to be the truth, and that's to come out as the truth, I think there'll be a lot of Evertonians that sort of turn their back on, on the, the Everton board and Farad Mashiri and go, right, okay, you know, maybe maybe that's it, because, you know, ultimately, again, what's the point in having Marcel Brandes as a diet of the football? If it is Farad Mashiri that's completely made that decision with no other input from anybody else, why give Marcel Brands a new three-year contract? What's the point? What is the point in giving Marcel Brands a new three-year contract? He should have been leading this and he should have been making the decisions because he is the footballer man. Um, and I feel like this appointment could turn a lot of Evertonians on, on Farad Mashiri. But that's just my opinion and from what I've seen on social media over the last couple of hours or so. Maybe if Benitez is appointed over the next couple of days, it'll settle and maybe the dust will settle a little bit and we'll all sort of, or a lot of Evertonians maybe will sort of think, yeah, do you know what, whatever it is, what it is. I'm just bored of the whole situation at the moment. I'm bored of the discussions. I'm bored of the rumours. I'm bored of the various different names on various different days. It's just really frustrating at the moment and it's really annoying and I just want Everton to make a decision and bring in a manager so we can all go even if it's underwhelming and even if it's not the man we want we can all go whatever yeah but at least we've got a manager now let's just focus on bringing in five or six players because we know we desperately desperately need to bring in five or six players as well so there you go that is the latest on the Everton manager news let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below as it stands according to Jim White and TalkSport Everton are on the brink of bringing in Rafa Benitez as the new Everton manager various other journalists are running with that same story as well so we'll wait and see how that one progresses over the next 24 hours hours or so we will be live tomorrow discussing that uh, early on tomorrow morning so don't forget to join us we'll be bringing the latest update we'll be getting involved in the live comments um, and yeah we'll be talking about all of that stuff tomorrow morning so don't forget to join us for that in other news then, because there is other news other than Everton's managerial discussions, I know it feels very much at the moment over the last couple of weeks like it's just been so heavy on the manager discussion and who it's going to be that comes in as the next Everton manager and, and, and look, you know, on the channel, if you're new to the channel by the way, don't forget to subscribe, it only takes a second, we're heading towards 4,400 subscribers now so if you could hit that subscribe button it would mean a great deal to me, if you're watching and you're enjoying, hit that like button, as soon as the manager stuff's out the way and we actually announce a manager and we can come on and talk about said manager and what they are going to bring and how it could be a positive or a negative etc then we'll start to get into the you know the discussions about players and recruitment and other bits and bobs as well but it has been very heavily based surrounding managers at the moment but Everton have or sorry not Everton the Premier League have released the fixtures for the 2021-2022 Premier League season Everton have been handed their set of fixtures and it starts with a home game at Goodison Park against Southampton on the 14th of August. I'm not going to go through the entire list of fixtures. You can find that list on our Twitter account. Uh, I'll leave the link in the description down below. You can find the entire list of fixtures. But we've actually got quite a decent run 
to start with. Not that it really matters at the moment because we haven't got a manager and the majority of the players in the squad aren't good enough. But we actually have a relatively decent run to start with. It includes Southampton at home, like I said, on the opening day. That is the 14th of August. We then play Leeds away, our first away game of the season on the 21st. We then play Brighton away on the 28th. Burnley at home on the 11th of September. Aston Villa away on the 18th of um September and then Norwich City at home on the 25th of um, September. We then get into our first game of October, which is Manchester United at uh, Old Trafford. That's the 2nd of October, so relatively... I want to say easy first couple of months of the Premier League season, but certainly uh, a first couple of months with a lot of very winnable games in there. Certain fixtures to note are the two Merseyside derby dates, the first one being the Goodison Merseyside derby, which is on the 30th of November at 7.45pm kickoff. You then have the Anfield derby, which is the 23rd of April with a 3pm kickoff. Other fixtures to note are Boxing Day, on Boxing Day, we play Burnley away. Um, a quite popular fixture over the last four or five years for Everton. I think we've played them twice on, on Boxing Day. Uh, one of them at Goodison Park, which I think was Carlo Ancelotti's first game in charge. We beat them 1-0. And one uh, away from home at Turf Moor, which was when Marco Silva was in charge. I think we beat them 5-1 um, in that season as well. Uh, we play Arsenal on the last game of the season. That is Sunday, the 22nd of May. That is away from home at the Emirates. So Arsenal away for the last game of the season. April is quite a difficult month. We play West Ham away on the 2nd. We play Man United at home on the 9th. Crystal Palace at home on the 16th. Um, we play Liverpool away on the 23rd. And we play Chelsea at home on the 30th. We then play Leicester on the 7th of May. Away from home. Brentford at home on the 15th. And Arsenal away on the 22nd. Which is that final game of the season. Saturday the 9th which is the Manchester United home game, is actually the same date as the Grand National. So that, and of course, all of the rest of the fixtures are subject to change as well. Um, because ultimately, look, you know, again, these fixtures and times and dates will be thrown about and, and changed constantly over the course of the next couple of months or so, um, because they always are. But that is an interesting one to note, is that on Saturday the 9th of April, which is the Grand National, if you're local to Liverpool and you, you, you like horse racing and you go to the Grand National, that is the same day as the game against Manchester United at Goodison Park. Might be changed, mightn't be changed. I know Liverpool played a home game on the National Day a couple of years ago with fans in the stadium, and that wasn't changed, but maybe with it being Manchester United and the police and stuff, um, Everton will, will ask for that game to be changed. And then another fixture of note is that on New Year's Day, we play Brighton and Hove Albion at Goodison Park. So that is another fixture to note. Like I said, I'm not going to go through them all, but you can find that full list of fixtures down on our Twitter. The link is in the description. That has been announced today. Usually we'd sit down and we'd have an in-depth discussion about, you know, the first couple of months of the season, the difficult months in December and stuff like that. And we will do that um, over the next couple of weeks or so once we've got a manager in. But at the moment, yeah, let's be honest, the fixtures were announced this morning and I think we all sort of just went, yeah, so who are we playing in the first game of the season? Who are we playing in the last game of the season? And when's the Merseyside derbies? Other than that, have we got a manager yet? No? Okay then, let's move on. And, and and like I said, please do subscribe to the channel. It only takes a second if you are new. We've got loads of content coming up over the next couple of days and, and weeks and months or so. We'll be live again tomorrow morning about 9, 30, 10 o'clock talking about the manager updates and much, much more. And then once the manager stuff's out the way, we'll be getting into players, potential signings, recruitment videos, talking about the fixtures, talking about the new manager, what he can bring. We'll have all of that when Everton finally decide to make up their mind and make a decision. But... Let's be honest, um, we don't know when that will be according to some journalists. It might be sooner than we think. But, like I said, very similar rumours last Friday about Nuno. And, um, you know, obviously he's not the Everton manager now. And I'm not saying that it's the same situation with Benitez as to what it was with Nuno. But what I would say is... Um, Let's just wait and see, you know, what decision the club make and then we can fully have our opinions and our say on it. But there you go. Look, that is the end of the video. If you've enjoyed this one, please do hit that like button. It does only take a second. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Massive, massive thank you all for watching. Leave your thoughts in the comments section down below. Like I said, we'll be live tomorrow morning. So please, please do join us for that live stream to get involved with the latest Everton news and updates and managerial update. And we'll be talking all about that one. But big thanks for watching. Leave a like if you've enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And we'll see you soon on the Mighty Blues.